Hello and welcome to the episode 332 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we'll see the Beatles having their last live date in Hamburg for a while, the Fabs recording their last Christmas record together, and John Lennon pleading guilty for cannabis possession. On the 28th of November 1960, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Stu Sutcliffe and Pete Best had their final night at a Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, despite their contract had not run out. As we'll see tomorrow, Kaiser Keller owner Bruno Koschmeider was going to play another nasty trick on them after being instrumental in George Harrison's deportation earlier in the month. See episode 325 for that. By this date in 1961, the Beatles' lineup had changed a bit. John Lennon and George Harrison were on guitar and voice, Paul McCartney had moved the bass while still singing, and Pete Best had kept his place at the drums. During the evening, the band was engaged at the Merseyside Civil Service Club in Liverpool for their last Tuesday night performance, the fourth in the month. Double feature for the Beatles in 1962. The band, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, was back in Liverpool after two days in London. First, they were on the stage of the Cavern Club for an evening performance, and then they took part to the Young Idea Dance at the 527 Club, an event for the staff of Lewis's, the biggest department store in Liverpool. The party opened to non-employees, so the Beatles only playing a quick slot. The main musical attraction was the D Valley Jazz Band and Pam. In 1963, the Beatles' autumn tour stopped at the ABC Cinema in Lincoln. On the 28th of November 1964, Enemy editor Chris Hutchkins visited John Lennon's new house in Weybridge. Enemy had decided to dedicate a full-page feature on the house on the 4th of December issue. Given the occasion, the interview with John was taped. It was edited and aired on the next day, between 10.45 and 11.31 pm, on BBC Radio's The Teen Scene. Two years later, in 1966, the Beatles were back in Abbey Road to keep on working on Strawberry Fields Forever, with the session lasting between 7 pm and 1.30 am, completing three more takes of the basic rhythm track. During this session, the song's key was changed from C major to A major to better accommodate John's vocals. The arrangement was also changed, with the Mellotron introduction taking the place of the first verse, followed by the chorus. Take 4 was roughly mixed in mono, with a copy of the work given to John to listen at home. 1967 at Norman's film production, with or without one or more Beatles, the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour flicks went on as usual. John Lennon certainly didn't attend today's editing session, as he had booked a session at the EMI Studios between 2 and 5 pm to complete the sound effect tapes for the forthcoming stage production of the Lennon play, in his own right. Then, between 6 pm and 2.45 am, the Beatles, with producer George Martin and actor-slash-friend Victor Spinetti, recorded the script they had prepared for the 1967 Fun Club Christmas record, plus a song especially written for the occasion, Christmas Time is Here Again, penned by Lennon, McCartney, Harrison Starkey. It was the last Christmas record that the lads recorded together. At 2.45, the other Beatles left the studio, while John Lennon remained until 4.30 am to keep on working on his sound effect tapes. 
Moving forward one year, on this date in 1968, John Lennon pleaded guilty for cannabis possession at the Marylebone Magistrates Court in London. John decided to take full responsibility for the drug found in the flat he was occupying with Yoko Ono see episode 291 for that, for two reasons. He wanted to protect Ono after her recent miscarriage, episode 325, and he was afraid that if they had fought the charges and lost, Ono might have been deported from Britain. John's solicitor claimed that Lennon had renounced any drug since meeting the Maharishi the previous year. It was a lie, but John got off with a fine and a warning from the judge. If found guilty of a similar crime again, he might have lost custody of his son, Julian. The sentence came back to haunt John Lennon after the Beatles break up, as it was the key point used by the Nixon administration to deny him a green card when he moved to the United States. I will instead plead guilty of another crime, that of reminding you once again to please visit www.simonmas.com support to find out all the ways in which you can help me to produce more and better music-related content for you. I hope you will be lenient with me and that you will decide to give me the little help I need to get by. Thank you! Let's close the episode with another 1969 session for Sentimental Journey, Ringo Starr's first solo effort. On this date, Ringo was at the EMI Studios, working from 5 pm to midnight. Oliver Nelson's arrangement for Blue Turning Grey Over You was recorded today. The session continued with a reduction mix of Stardust, Ringo's vocal overdubs on it, and a stereo mix down that concluded the work on the song. I, instead, am going to conclude this episode. Join me tomorrow for more stories about the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.